I'm here with Farhad Hafezi. Farhad, you know, um, um, I'm excited about collagen cross, cross linking. I think it, it's uh, going to be great. We're on the verge, I, I hope, of uh, being able to use it in the in the U.S. and and the context in which we're going to be using it is for keratoconus and ectatic problems. But you're you're using it in, in quite a different way. Can I get you to talk about that a little bit? Hi, Josh. Thanks for having me here. Yes, what we are most excited about actually is um, the shift from the concept of cross-linking from a rare disease like ectatic disease to corneal infection, one of the major causes of global blindness. Um, why is cross-linking so versatile? Simply because it's not a technique per se, it's a physiological principle that was rediscovered and that can be used in various fields now. Now, you, you, you brought some very nice slides. I'm eager to get a look at them, so let's get a look at them now. Great. Okay. Um, infectious keratitis represents a new indication for corneal cross-linking. It is one of the global causes of, of blindness, with an estimated more than 5 million new cases in developing country, minor corneal trauma, um, little to no access to the healthcare system, brings a lot of eyes into legal blindness. We know the state of the art, which is medication, but we also know that sometimes we face major diagnostic and therapeutic dilemmas and difficulties, and sometimes eyes end up in catastrophes like the one you see on the left. Interestingly, the proof of concept of cross-linking as a therapeutic means was given by our group back in 2008. How does it work? First of all, this is the new definition of the term. We took a consensus at the last Crosslinking Congress to call this PAC-CXL, photoactivated chromophore for keratitis, to make a difference to a conventional CXL for keratoconus. We assume that PAC works by three different mechanisms. On one hand, it can intercalate, so irreversibly bind with the DNA of the pathogen and stop replication. The huge load of oxidative stress that is generated kills the kills uh, many pathogens. And lastly, cross-linking per se changes the three-dimensional structure of the collagen, making it harder for the collagenases to dock to the cleavage sites. Um, the first study was performed in the lab in 2008. This was an IOVS paper showing that using the Dresden protocol settings, so 30 minutes, 3 milliwatts, you can kill a lot of MRSA and staph aureus. In the same year, we published the first results in a case series of five patients having remarkable results in, in, um, in um, uh, therapy-resistant corneal ulceration. And this is the most amazing a case series that was uh, published by a Swedish, series, a Swedish group. Here, no antibiotics were used at all. This is cross-linking only before... This is just, just cross-linking, there's is, no... Really? There's not a single drop of right, antibiotics. So they received an ethical committee clearance that allowed us to really show the difference between um, the, the, the effect of pax cxl and this is what we are so enthusiastic about. Now, we took it into far advanced impending perforation ulcers. This was published just two months ago, and even in these very advanced cases, it, it works. But the real challenge would be to apply this on a global level in early infiltrates and small ulcers. So to get to meet these unmet needs, we have to make this technology inexpensive, take it out of the operating theater, make it fast, make it small, make it secure, so we can give it into the hands of the general ophthalmologist. To do so, we are able, our own research now, push down the, the, the uh, in accelerated the treatment to two and a half minutes, we are able to kill 99.9% .9 of MRSA candida pseudomonas in, two, in 150 seconds, and we are planning to uh, get this device to market as a, as a spin-off huh. company from the University of Geneva. You take off the gold manometer, you place it on the slit lamp, and so an eye doctor in a remote region with little infrastructure will always have a slit lamp, so he has a, an infrastructure to use cross-linking. Um, there will be two heads to it, a keratoconus head and, a, and an infectious keratitis head with different irradiation profiles. And most importantly, a safety mechanism that measures the fluorescence of the of the of the of the chromophore in real time this will not be riboflavin anymore it will be a new chromophore that is more efficient um, measures the fluorescence and stops the surgeon if there is uh, not enough fluorescence or, or if the patient has moved the head away from the from the slit lamp so uh, 
by implementing all these safety measures and uh, having a small device, we hope that every ophthalmologist will have the opportunity to treat a small ulcer as soon as it comes through the door of the private practice. Okay. So that, 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 that looked, obviously, that looked brilliant. Let, let me ask you, what, what do you think the, 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 the time frame is for getting this device in, into practices? Um, we hope the time frame will be 12 to 18 months. Oh, that soon, really? Yeah. Why? Because the wavelength um, is the same as is actually used in all the cross-linking devices. We will offer 3, 9, 18 and 30 milliwatts. And all these, all these uh, intensities are already on the market in other devices. So the fluences are similar. Um, the big difference in device is the safety mechanism, the possibility to have two different irradiation profiles in, in one machine. It will be very inexpensive. We want it. We want everybody to be to be able to afford the machine. So I think it's it, the first step will be right rather rather fast, and then uh, probably 12 to 18 months later, we will launch the new chromophore that is even more efficient than riboflavin. Can you can you talk about the um, chromophore, or, or, is, or is that not something that we can talk about just yet? Um, uh, for IP protection, I cannot reveal the substance, sure. but it is a substance that is already in use in ophthalmology, so it's it's nothing that is new and has to go through major regulatory processes. Right. That was my, what, what my yeah. question was, yeah. But, uh, but we found a new mechanism of action to a known substance. Farhad, this is wonderful, wonderful stuff. I'm really grateful that, 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 you've, that you've shown it and I'm, I'm especially grateful that you've been so generous with your time with us today. Thank you, Josh, for spreading the word.